dads. Some of us have them, some of us don't. Dads are great. So as John Mayer once said, let's rank all the dads in One Piece. That was the best intro I could think of. Take it away, Levity. <laughs> what? <laughs> Am I supposed to vote off that? We were going to do a countdown ranking of all the dads in One Piece, but we realized that a bunch of them just kind of exist, so it would be hard to rank numerically. So we're putting them on a tier list because people love those. Starting with the bottom in F tier, we have the dads who are basically just highly abusive garbage. For instance, there's Judge, undoubtedly the worst dad in One Piece. Judge not only used his own children as test subjects, but then subjected them to physical tests no one should ever put a child through. Plus, when he found out that one of them was not an automaton, he subjected that child to even further emotional and physical turmoil, locking him in a dungeon, spurning his interests, and leaving him with general deep emotional scars. And don't get me started on how creepy it is to program your daughter with the inability to resist any command you give her. That's pretty messed up. Just edging out Judge very slightly. Kaido is also a highly physically and verbally abusive father and has kept his poor child Yamato locked up under penalty of death for years. He only beats Judge out very slightly because at the very least he seems to respect his kid's wishes to become Odin. Also an F tier dad is the father of X Drake. Diaz Barrels. While he didn't lock up Drake as a child like the other two so far, he was an abusive scumbag so he's also here. Finally in F tier there's Chopper's dad, who no doubt heavily persecuted Chopper along with the other reindeer, and probably never let him play any reindeer games. Then we have the D tier dads, which are the dads who were just woefully neglectful rather than actually physically harmful to their children. Gold Roger is the worst offender in this category, getting a girl pregnant just before he knew he was going to peace out. I mean. Come on, man. They found out he was your son anyway. You couldn't have had him earlier. The kid is traumatized because of you. Nice going. Next up in D tier is Yasop. Despite Usopp idolizing his father, Yasop's abandonment of his family clearly left some serious emotional scars on the poor boy, from which he has yet to recover. Tanjit from Long Ring Island also falls into D tier, as his obsession with stilts isolated him from his family in a large way. He was literally obsessed with keeping them at a distance. Hopefully he makes amends now that he's met back up with them at last. Dragon is our last D rank dad since while he may have had good reasons to leave Luffy behind, leaving your kid behind does not make you a good dad. Is he a good person? Maybe, but a good dad? No, he's neglectful. And yet he did save him in Logue Town, so he inches up above the other deadbeats, but still, come on. Next up, we have our C tier dads, or our could have done better dads. You'll see what I mean in a minute. First up, we have Kalgara at the bottom of C tier. While overall, he seemed to take pretty good care of his daughter Moose, there was that one time he tried to feed her to a snake, could have done better there, man. Next up is Outlook the Third. Despite not neglecting or abusing his kid like some of the earlier entries on this list, Sabo's dad, Outlook the Third, was really a pretty bad dad. He was basically a pageant mom, refusing to see his kid as anything but a tool he could use to gain status and wealth. And this went so far to the point where that kid actually just ran away. Once again, could have done better, man. Also in C tier is Garp. And Garp, just because you were raised in a jungle fighting large cats doesn't mean that this is how you are supposed to raise your children. Sadly, no one but me just now has ever told Garp this. So people keep giving him children to raise and he keeps hiding them in jungles and forcing them to fend for themselves. I mean, he's trying, I guess? But judging by how his kids and grandkids keep rebelling, you'd think he'd get the hint. Maybe this parenting style isn't the best way to go? Of course, we don't quite know if he did this to Dragon 2, but probably. Axehand Morgan, St. Roswell, Wald and Spandine are all in C tier too, as despite not doing anything overtly horrible to their kids, they did allow them to grow up into little snots, which is by definition, not great parenting. Finally, in C tier, we have Kushiro, who I might be saying the name of wrong. In my defense, his name's not ever actually said. You might know him better as Kuina's dad. And despite the fact that he took fairly good care of his daughter Kuina and did teach her the way of the blade, he did shatter her dreams when he told her that she would never become a great swordsman because of being a lady person. Honestly, the guy could learn a thing or two from Kaido. Now, we have a special rank here. I'm going to be calling it the C.5 rank, which are people who are basically just confirmed dads, who we don't really know if they're actually good dads or not, which is really why we had to do a tier list instead of the overall rankings. But here they are. Some of them, for instance, are people who we know have descendants, but we've never actually seen them interact with their own kids. So this includes people like Noland, Chinjao, and Ors, 
who apparently, you know, had kids. It also includes people like Gancho and King Beer, and of course Law's dad, who have kids, sure, but we haven't really seen much of their dynamic. I mean, Law's dad seemed pretty nice, but he died fairly early on after his introduction, so who knows where he would actually have gone. Then in C.5 rank, we have Mr. Nine, who does seem to have, you know, a good bond with his child, but he seems to bond with his child in the most dangerous way possible. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. Also, I'd like to say we have a C.5.5 rank, which is the semi-confirmed dad, which I basically just made for one person, which is Strusen. Because while it hasn't been confirmed, we all know he's Perospero's father. That's right. He found a little girl and raised her to be his wife. What a creep. Moving on, we have B rank, which is the dads who tried their best. This includes people like Sukiyaki. No one can blame Sukiyaki for trying, but when you have a kid like Odin, there isn't a tight enough leash you can keep him on. I mean, all in all, Odin turned out pretty good, but I'm not even sure that was because of his father's guidance. Still, guy tried his best, can't fault him that much. Once again, B tier Yasui made the best of a bad situation and took care of the orphan Toko as his own child. Granted, she had to become a prostitute in training to pay the bills, so he didn't do that great of a job, but he tried his best. Zeph is also in B tier. Despite the fact that he isn't actually Sanji's dad, Sanji sees him as such, due to the loving guidance and sacrifice he provided for Sanji. Granted, he was a bit of a boomer dad who kind of blurred the line between tough love and physical abuse, but Sanji seemed to appreciate it, and basically all of Sanji's best qualities came from Zeph. So we're putting him firmly in B tier. Also in B tier is Neptune, because yeah, Neptune has done some questionable things in the name of love for his kids, such as locking Shirohashi in a tower for like a decade. Still, as we've seen, especially in the Reverie arc, he is willing to do anything, even give his life for his kids. So we can't really fault him too hard for being a little misguided. He is a single father of four after all. We also have Senior Pink. Now, Senior Pink really loves his family. He did, and he worked hard to provide for them. Granted, his actions sort of led to his child's untimely death, so he's not one of the greats, but he sure tried, B tier for sure. Then we have Odin in B tier. I mean, obviously in most categories of consideration, Odin would be S tier, but as a father, he is a B tier. Because Odin was actually a pretty loving dad for most of his time as a father. He did pop off for a while with Roger, leaving the kids behind, so he does get knocked down a peg for placing his sense of duty and maybe to some degree his wanderlust over his family. But all things considered, decent dad, decent dad. B tier for sure. Now, if there's anyone who exemplifies the B tier best, it is Don Quixote Homing, the father of Doflamingo. Boy, did he try his best. Of course, only to land his family in a world of pain. His rash decision making was both too hasty to protect the family and too little to keep Doflamingo from becoming a monster. But that aside, good dad, really good dad. Now we move on to A tier. The Great Dads. Starting off in A tier is King Riku. Now, Riku was not only a great king, but a pretty great dad. We've seen in the story that he allowed his kids to pursue love and happiness over duty to the nation. And he became a father-like figure to Kairos too, something that no doubt allowed the young man to go from a murderous street urchin to the amazing guy he turned into as an adult. Then, Toto is also in A tier. Toto was another great dad who truly loved his son. You remember him, right? Guy from Alabasta, dug a lot of holes. Yeah, I barely remember him either. Good parent though. Then we have Cobra, King Cobra of Alabasta. Despite being a little bit of a helicopter parent, although something he may have had a bit of a right to be when dealing with the sole heir to a several century old kingdom, Cobra really has proven to be a loving, supportive parent. I mean, there's not a ton to say about him, or maybe I just don't like talking about Alabasta. Probably that. Then in A tier, we have Pound. Pound may not have gotten a lot of time with his kids, but the time he did spend with, or rather near them, was mostly spent risking his life in their behalf. So while there isn't enough data to say if he would have been the best father ever, I have no complaints here. Great dad. Speaking of that family though, we have the ruthless killer, but excellent father, Capone Beige. Like, his moments with little Pez are just absolutely adorable. I mean, he probably shouldn't be bringing a baby into these dangerous situations, even if the baby already has a five o'clock shadow, but still, he's a pretty caring parent. A tier. Next in A tier is Milo. You remember him. That's the guy who got turned into a toy by Sugar and had to care for his child from a distance, despite his family having forgotten him. No, not, not Kairos, the, the other one that that exact same thing happened to. Yeah, yeah, he's an A tier too. Speaking of Kairos, next is Kairos. He is just one of the best dads, of course. Just 
great dad overall. He watched over his child for years, all the while knowing she had no idea who he was. I personally think he would be an S tier if it weren't for that whole weird obsession with not actually having any physical contact with his daughter while she was younger. Man, that's not healthy for a kid. You gotta know that, right? You gotta hug your kid. Moving on, we have Whitebeard or Pops, as you may know him, the dad to those who have none. So to answer your question, Newgate, no, you weren't a good father. I'm told you were the best. Or were you? After all, there's still the question of if you left your actual biological son out in the cold. And until we know for sure, well, we can't crown you bestest poppy. In fact, that distinction goes to our only S tier dad, Pageya. The number one dad in One Piece is Pageya. Why? Well, he is one of the only dads on this list that not only personally raised a well-adjusted, beneficial member of society, but also doesn't regularly put said child in mortal danger. He also has no weird quirks or bad parenting styles that hold him back from being a great dad, and he once tried to sacrifice himself for his kid. I mean, he survived somehow, but that's par for the course for dads in One Piece. Moms, on the other hand, Guy go, guy go. Hey there. Don't leave without subbing. Hey there. Don't leave without liking. Hey there. Don't forget to comment. Hit, hit the, the bell, bell, hit the bell, bell hit the bell. bell.